All right, so here's another implicit differentiation problem. Uh, we're given some curve and, well, let's say what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to find y prime. Uh, so here's a okay sort of attempt at reproducing what this curve actually looks like. If you want to see a better drawing, uh, there's a nice computer generated one in the, uh, in the textbook. Uh, and you can see that certainly this is not the graph of a function, right? Definitely doesn't satisfy the vertical line test. You can see there are these sort of two pieces, right? Um, but of course, this piece here on its own would be a function. This piece here, well, the whole thing's not going to be a function, right? You can see this bit here. Well, there's some issues there with the vertical line test. But it would work up to about there. Looks like there's maybe a vertical tangent here as we as we cross the x-axis. Uh, another one over here is going to come out and, and go back. Uh, but there are pieces of that curve that certainly could be realized as the graph of a function. And that's, that's the whole point of implicit differentiation. Uh, we can't globally describe the curve as the graph of a function, but locally we can. And as long as we're only interested in finding y prime at points where locally uh, the curve can be expressed as a graph of a function, we'll be fine. So again, the assumption here is that y is defined implicitly as some function of x. This allows us to take the derivative of both sides of the equation. So we can do the derivative with respect to x on both sides, okay, where on this side we're doing y cubed plus x squared, y to the 4, and on the other side, we're doing 1 plus 2x. All right. So the right-hand side is, is strictly a function of x, so we can, we can do that derivative right away. We get 2. That's easy. Uh, what about the left-hand side? So y cubed, again, we think of y as some function of x as being cubed. So chain rule says we should do power rule for the outside, 3y squared. But then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we get a y prime. What about this, uh, this other term? Well, here we have a product. And somehow, um, you know, when, even if you've mastered the product rule, you've mastered the chain rule, you're feeling good about those, you get to here, things are out of context, and suddenly you don't recognize that you're dealing with a product. Right? You have x squared times y to the 4. Or, or you recognize the product, and then you forget about the chain rule, because there's the y term. Um, Somehow having to deal with both of those simultaneously in an unfamiliar context, it's, it's enough to sort of mess people up. But we do have to deal with both of them. The derivative of x squared is 2x times y to the 4. But there's one more term we got to fit in here. We have x squared times the derivative of y to the 4, which is 4y cubed times y prime. So again, we have to solve for y prime. So we look for where are all the terms of the y prime. There's one here, there's one there. So we have to collect those terms, factor out whatever they're being multiplied by. So we have a 3y squared, and then we have a 4x squared y cubed coming from here. And on the other side, well, we move this remaining term over. So we have 2 minus 2x y to the 4. Anything that doesn't have a y prime, put it on the right-hand side. Now, solving for y prime is simply a matter of dividing by the stuff that we factored out. So we have 2 minus 2x y to the 4 over 3y squared plus 4x squared y cubed, right? And that gives us an expression for y prime. Now, of course, it is an expression in terms of both x and y, right? Um, and so it's still the case that if we wanted to figure out the slope of the tangent line at some point on the curve, uh, we'd first have to find that point on the curve, right? And, and that means we have to find solutions to this equation that we started with, um, which could be easier said than done. Uh, now, it just so happens that one such solution is x equals 0, y equals 1, right? So we can check uh, 1, 
cubed plus 0 squared times 1 to the 4 is indeed equal to 1 plus 2 times 0, right? 1 plus 0 equals 1 plus 0. Good. So there's a point on the curve. So if we wanted to, we could say at the point 0, 1, y prime is equal to, so 0 makes that go away, so we'll simply have a 2 on top, and 0 is going to make that go away, that's going to be 3 times 1. So y prime is 2 thirds. And so the tangent line is going to be y equals 1 plus 2 thirds times x. Right? And that gives us the tangent line passing through that point. And again, if you, if you graph both this line and the curve using software, you'll find that you do indeed have a good tangent line here using this method.